Hi, I'm Tom Cruise. I'm a multi-engine, uh, instrument-rated commercial pilot. What's Tom up to in 2024? Has Tom Cruise ever gotten tired of being, well, Tom Cruise? And is his mansion so big that he needs GPS just to find the bathroom? How many helicopters does he own now? And of course, is he still searching for the fountain of youth? Well, folks, you're in for a treat because we've got all the deets. So grab your popcorn and let's embark on this epic journey. What does it take to become one of the highest paid celebrities in the world, raking in $100 million per film? Tom Cruise's journey demonstrates how talent, ambition, and shrewd business acumen can transform an ordinary person into an entertainment industry mogul. This essay, We'll explore Cruz's path to fortune and the extravagant lifestyle his massive wealth affords. Born in 1962 in Syracuse, New York, Cruz had a typical lower middle class upbringing. His family moved frequently as his father searched for work. Young Cruz initially pursued athletics, but an injury sidelined his hopes of a sports career. However, while recovering, he became engrossed in acting. Cruz appeared in school plays before heading to New York at age 18 to pursue his dream. To support himself, he worked as a hotel bellhop and restaurant waiter. What motivates people to take big risks, chasing unlikely dreams of fame and fortune? Many are driven by a desire to prove their talent and make it big. Some seek fortune and glory. Others want the satisfaction of overcoming the odds. An early life struggle or setback often ignites determination. Cruz perhaps wished to prove himself and gained security lacking in childhood. In 1981, Cruz relocated to Los Angeles and landed minor film roles. Two years later, he broke through as the star of Risky Business, portraying a teen who turns his home into a brothel while his parents are away. This comedic drama grossed $65 million and put Cruz on the map. Rather than flashing his trademark smile, he played against type as a cocky schemer. The gamble paid off with a Best Actor Golden Globe nomination. What enables someone to rise rapidly in Hollywood at a young age? Breakout roles highlight range and depth, not just generic good looks. Leveraging sudden fame into better projects, connecting with power agents, producers, cultivating an intriguing image. Cruz and his team strategically built his career momentum. Now an in-demand celebrity, Cruz's paychecks surged. He earned $2 million for 1986's action hit Top Gun, playing a daring naval aviator. 1988's Rain Man won Best Picture and grossed $354 million globally. Cruz's poignant performance as the yuppie brother to Dustin Hoffman's autistic savant earned him his first Oscar nomination these back-to-back -back smashes cemented his status as one of Hollywood's top leading men. By the early 90s, Entertainment Weekly ranked him the hash one movie star in the world. But Cruz upped the ante with even greater box office results by the middle of the decade. As sports agent Jerry Maguire in Cameron Crowe's romantic dramedy, his charismatic turn produced some of cinema's most memorable catchphrases like, show me the money and you had me at hello. This role garnered Cruz his second Oscar nomination and third Golden Globe win. However, 1996 truly marked a turning point when Cruz starred in the hit action thriller Mission Impossible, based on the 1960s spy TV series. As secret agent Ethan Hunt, he performed his death-defying stunts like clinging to an airplane mid-takeoff. The movie was lucrative enough to spawn a long-running franchise with five sequels and counting. But Mission Impossible also proved a key business move for Cruz, earning him $1.70 million, more than triple his previous biggest payday. What enabled Cruz to command such an unprecedented upfront salary at this pivotal career juncture, securing back-end ownership of the IP early on? He became a producer, getting a cut of gross box office receipts. And he structured a deal for future sequel participation. This astute creative and financial involvement in his projects became the foundation of Cruz's wealth. He co-founded Cruz Wagner Productions and partnered with Paula Wagner to develop films they would star in and have back and stakes in. Cruz also held equity in United Artists Studio, the entity distributing many of his movies. By having points on the profits, Cruz could earn tens of millions more based on a film's performance. For 2000's Mission, Impossible 2, his acting salary was just $20 million. But his overall earnings topped $100 million due to back-end payouts. This inverted standard studio deals where actors earn big upfront fees but no equity. Now the star had major skin in the game. Why did studios grant Cruz so much favorable control? He was an undisputed box office titan so that he could demand sweetheart terms. Studios got a proven hitmaker 
and leaned on Cruz's marketing clout to open blockbusters. It was a win-win symbiosis, as long as the movies scored. And score they did. 2005's War of the Worlds, with Cruz as a dad fighting alien invaders, grossed $591 million worldwide. His total haul was again around $100 million. Between Mission, Impossible Installments, and other hits, Cruz's career windfall soared north of $4 billion. He is reportedly the only actor to have 10 films earn over $100 million domestically, and his movies have made almost $10 billion globally, more than any star ever. This enormous income has allowed Cruz to indulge in a lavish lifestyle. He owns several stately homes, each worth tens of millions. His former Hollywood Hills estate spanned almost three acres with seven bedrooms. This mansion was sold to actress Eva Longoria for $11.4 million. In Beverly Hills, he sold another residence to billionaire Leon Black for roughly $40 million. Cruz also spends freely on exotic vehicles. He has owned classic American muscle cars like a 1958 red Chevrolet Corvette convertible valued at $130,000. For cruising in style, his customized vintage 1970 Chevelle SS with a V8 engine is worth up to $200,000. When feeling the need for speed, Cruz has driven high-end European sports cars. His garage included a Mercedes-Benz S-Class convertible costing over $100,000 and a $250,000 Ferrari. But perhaps his most jaw-dropping auto extravagance is a Bugatti Veyron, a French-built supercar that reaches 60 miles per hour in 2.6 seconds. Its quad-turbo engine generates 1,000 horsepower while maxing out at 253 miles per hour. Only a few hundred exist worldwide, fetching around $3 million each. Dripping in luxury like this, it's clear Cruz enjoys the finer things. What motivates people to own such wildly expensive cars when a Honda Accord fulfills basic transportation needs? Expensive cars can provide sensory pleasure, visceral thrills from speed and power. They also signal status and wealth, for stars like Cruz, these toys are another way to reap the rewards of their success. For air travel, Cruz opts for the ultimate in luxury, private jets. His go-to is apparently a Gulfstream i-Free SP, which can fly up to 4,000 miles without refueling. This $70 million aircraft is decorated with fine finishes like Brazilian rosewood accents and wool carpeting. It seats up to 19 passengers across three areas, including a stateroom with a queen-sized bed. To keep his planes ready for takeoff, Cruz built his airport hangar in Telluride, Colorado. Nestled in the picturesque Rocky Mountains, this 10 000 foot runway services Cruz's fleet and serves as a getaway destination. He also owns multiple properties in Telluride, like a 320-acre ranch he purchased for $39 million. This mountain retreat features a private helipad and direct snowmobile access to ski trails. Cruz occasionally charters even bigger private jets to transport himself, his entourage, and their luggage across continents. Once, he reportedly sent his Gulfstream on a 5-500-mile five, round trip just to collect 300 cupcakes from his favorite New York bakery. When you're worth hundreds of millions, life's everyday whims get fulfilled. For aquatic adventures, Cruz has rented luxury yachts like the 777. This 223-foot vessel offers 5,500 square feet of living space, including five plush staterooms. It is staffed with a crew of 17, ready to cater to any guest's needs. Weekly rental rates for super yachts like this start around $600,000, pocket change for Cruz. He can lounge poolside on the 777's open-air sun deck or sip cocktails in a hot tub on the Sky Lounge. Cruz always travels first class, whether by land, air, or sea, and his outfitting matches the opulence. Even his aviator sunglasses cost upwards of $400. On red carpets, Cruz wears designer tuxedos from Armani, Ralph Lauren, Prada, and Dolce & Gabbana. His luxury timepieces include Rolex, Cartier, and that's a wrap on our Tom Cruise expedition. If you're not convinced he's part cyborg after learning about his fortune, car haven, and mansion maze, well, we don't know what will. If Tom's lifestyle were a movie, It'd be a blockbuster. Don't forget to hit subscribe and ring that notification bell so you won't miss the next episode of Celebrity Cribs and Counting Cash. Until then, stay fabulous, stay sassy, and stay curious. Catch you on the flip side, Internet Explorers.